you know, when I sat down just now, my original thought was just to share with you another story of, a, of bumping into a celebrity or a famous person. And, you know, I, I've been thinking about it for a couple of days, you know, before I sit here and talk to you guys that, you know, I, I do kind of work it out of my head what I'm going to say uh, and everything, but otherwise you just kind of, kind of make it up as I go along. But the gentleman I'm going to speak about, I realize, I don't know, I, I had this epiphany about him and how he shaped my life, this guy. And let me just get right to him. The person I'm talking about is Timothy Carey, C-A-R-E-Y. Timothy Carey, um, he's a character actor. He's a very famous character actor if you're into film. If you're into film, you know him from Stanley Kubrick, his early movies, The, uh, the Killing and um, Paths of Glory. Kirk Douglas, Paths of Glory. Both directed by Stanley Kubrick. And my understanding is that he was Stanley Kubrick's favorite actor, if I'm remembering my books right. Um, maybe it was Francis Ford Coppola. I, anyway, doesn't matter. Famous guy. Worked with the most famous film director in history. The man, I feel like, should I give his history now? Should I talk about it afterwards? I Everything's out the window when I wanted to sit down here now. Because I had this... Back to, let me talk about me. I've mentioned it before. Where I come from, socioeconomically, is a really depressed area and it was a really bad area. You know, my father worked hard, but we had a lot of kids and it was a gang neighborhood and uh, it was a bad neighborhood and there was, there was shootings and stuff. I think I've used this phrase before. When I was a kid, they, didn't, they weren't called drive-by shootings. They were called neighborhood shootings in the news. You know, that's how old they were. But anyway, the... Uh, you would think at this uh, socioeconomic level, you wouldn't have any dreams. You wouldn't think if someone came up to you and said, hey, kid, you should be a movie director. Yeah, right. I, you know, I should be a movie. You, know, you would think everything would be despondent and depression and things like that. And I feel like I come across as kind of a depressed guy or kind of a bummed out guy a little bit. But not necessarily, you know, so not necessarily so I'm thoughtful, but uh, I don't think I'm fully depressed. Um, and a big part of it is, is because as a kid, if someone told me, and, and sometimes people did, not everybody, it wasn't like everyone was patting me on the shoulders or anything, but, but when people did say, hey, wow, you can really tell a story good, you should, you should write books, or you should be a lawyer, or you should be in the, you know, you should, you're so funny, you should be in the movies or something. I never discounted that. Yeah, I should be. <laughs> That's something I should think about. You know, some people ought to be, if I should, should I be a fireman or should I be in the movies? That was never an odd thought in my head, probably because I lived in Los Angeles um, and the movie business was around us. You'd always see things being filmed and stuff. They filmed 70s cop shows in El Monte all the time where I lived. You'd still see them. Uh, I, I can think of a few productions in my head. And we'd always watch the shows, you know, and so we could see our street. Um, I remember it was a big deal, a TV show called All in the Family. Archie Bunker mentioned his wife Edith had a cousin in Al Monte. I think we as a family stood up in our chairs or my father, hey, how about that? Hey, hey, you know, I don't know. I think it was things like that that made me think, yeah, I'm, I'm good enough. It's Al Monte. They talk about it on TV and famous shows and, and, uh, and you know, the movie business is right there. It's not a strange thing. At the age when I was just able to get out and about and, and leave the house, which would have been like eight years old when I was a kid, you know, you could leave the house and wander around a few blocks with your friends. Um, Timothy Carey uh, became noticeable in my life, though he lived in the area. But I noticed him, and he was just a man on the street, Mr. Carey, that drove by once in a while, and people said hi, and he stopped his car and talked out the window to your dad or something, you know. But he would train attack dogs right near my house. That's a strange, <laughs> that's a strange, uh, a strange segue there. But, um, but I think I've already talked about that he's very famous and he's worldwide known and all these other things. Let me get to, to the me and him part now. Timothy Carey, 
uh, behind my house, they had built this park, the Whittier Narrows Park. And it was huge. And, and before they put in all the, the sports areas and the soccer fields and the playgrounds, it was just, it was built by the Army Corps of Engineers. And it was a, a huge expanse of grass that just went out, you know? And, uh, and Mr. Carey would drive in from past our house on Rush Street, go to Loma Avenue and go into the park. And just uh, right next to where the 60 freeway is now, the, the 60 freeway just on the north side, he would train these attack dogs. Um, pretty sure there was German Shepherd and I think Doberman Pinschers also. And there'd always be three or four of them. And it was cool. They'd sit there and, and they would sit one at a time and listen to them. And they'd go attack this guy in a big, uh, in a big marshmallow looking suit, you know, and they tore at him. And it was never frightening. It was just really cool to watch. Well, over the course of a couple summers, Mr. Carey's doing his attack dog thing. We kids would watch. He would do it on the weekends. We kids would watch, and we'd be like 200 yards away. And maybe the next day we'd be 150 yards away. Anyway, at some point, I think we're about 70 yards. and we're laying, There's no brush. It's just grass. So we're laying flat on the grass watching him. We were aware he'd kept one eye on us, but we're really far away. Um, at this point, though, I want to say maybe we were like 70 yards away, the closest we'd ever been. The dogs are running around and they're attacking this guy, two of them. And he's spinning around this guy in a marshmallow suit and the dogs are hanging off of him. And I think we got excited and sat up or something. And I remember Mr. Carey's head immediately looked over because we sat up from the grass. And I also noted that the dogs looked over. <laughs> and me and my friend saw the dogs looked and we both had the same feeling. We just jumped up and ran, which was probably the wrong thing to do. <laughs> but we jumped up and ran and I didn't look back and uh, Mr. Carey, and I'd never heard the assistant guy talk. They both were yelling, screaming, and whistling, get back here, get back here. And, God damn you boys, and God damn it boys. He was yelling, God damn it boys, God damn you boys. And he was calling the dogs back. And I never looked back. I don't know if they got close. I have no idea, but we ran like crazy. <laughs> well, he just hollered in the background. Never looked back. Um, no idea if they chased after us, but it was a really stupid thing that we had done. Um, cut to... Two hours later, we're playing on the street in front of the in front of the house, uh, you know, uh, where, where I lived, and uh, and my father's out there talking to one of the neighbor men or something, and I'm we're, we're just standing as, as people do. Anyway, Mr. Carey comes driving by in his gigantic station wagon with the dogs in the back and the assistant guy, and he comes driving by, and I'm hoping as usual we're just going to wave at him as he goes past, but no, he stops the car and he gets out of the car and he walks straight over to my father. And, uh, and he walks over and I didn't know he knew my dad's name. And he says, uh, hey, Rudy, he goes, I'm sorry. Uh, and he assumed we told, we hadn't told. He says to my dad, hey, Rudy, I'm sorry I had to yell at the boys there. He goes, but you know when I'm with the dogs. And he goes on to explain that we, were, we got too close and he said it was his fault. He should have said something earlier, but they shouldn't come anymore, et cetera, et cetera. And so he had yelled at us quite a bit and he wanted to apologize. My father, you know, poo-pooed the whole thing and told him to yell at him louder next time, you know, let the dogs bite him. My father says, um, anyway, he then shares pleasantries as gentlemen do. And he gets back in the car and he goes when he leaves again, Mr. Carey, he's just a guy that's been driving back and forth with dogs. He's a mean looking man. And I don't even know anything about him. Um, my father explains to the other gentleman from the neighborhood and to kind of us in general, he explains to all of us, he goes, do you know that guy's famous? And no, I didn't know. Uh, what do you mean? And he goes, he's a big famous actor, my dad goes on to explain. He's been in like movies with Kirk Douglas. And, uh, and this went big far with, with my friend, you know, with my friend's dad, the other guy that's talking. He goes, what are you talking about? Yeah, he's with Kirk Douglas. He's in a big war movie, Paz of Glory. And he's, oh, he's on TV all the time. Cut to me watching television every single night of my life. Everywhere I look, Mr. Carey's on TV. I just start noticing him everywhere. Oh, yeah, there he is. It's true. He's on Columbo and he's Mannix. Uh, canon problem, all these detective shows, all these detective shows. He's always a bad guy or he's a gruff guy or he's a butcher with a paper hat on shaking his fist, you know. Beretta, maybe he was out area. Anyway, everywhere I looked, not comedies, but everywhere I looked, he's on TV shows, on dramas. And it was just ingrained in my life. Like, yeah, that's a guy you know could be a famous guy that works with Stanley Kubrick and, 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 and who tells Francis Ford Coppola, no, I don't want to be in your movie. That's just a person. And so, of course, you could do it. Of course, I could do it. Anybody could do it if Mr. Carey could do it. And I think that's the gift he gave me just by being who he was, you know. 
So I celebrate Timothy Carey because the guy is a great American artist and, and, and he shaped my life in, in ways I just realized like in the, in the last couple of days.